welcome. You're watching Head to Head. I'm Antonin Antosha with UATV. Today, we're talking about the international agenda. Donald Trump decided to pull the United States out of the nuclear weapons pact with Russia, claiming that Moscow is violating the deal. Meanwhile, thousands of protesters marched in central London to call for a second referendum on Brexit. How will these events affect the geopolitical situation in the world. To talk more about this, we welcome in our studio Maxim Yakovlev. He's the director of the School for Policy Analysis at the National University of Kiev Mahila Academy. Hello and thank you for joining us. Hello, thank you for inviting me. So let's talk about the latest news first, uh, meaning that um, the claim by the U.S. President Donald Trump that the U.S. is going to pull out of the nuclear weapons deal with Russia. Now, what could this mean for Russia, first of all? Well, for Russia, it has like a twofold meaning. First, mm -hmm. it is a normal reaction of a world superstate to a behavior of another state. Uh, 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 and that state is involved in many hideous crimes, as we know, both including Ukraine, the war in Donbass, the illegal annexation of Crimea, situation in Syria, and many, many other Georgia. affairs. Yes, as well. These things and also involvement into chemical poisoning on the British soil, yeah. which is also important in national context. That's why, uh, even though we can discuss Trump as an interesting figure in international politics, what he does is a very strict and good reaction, I would say, because what Russia has to offer to the world, it's not like, I don't know, Elon Musk and his uh, things like sending, the Russia would definitely be counteracted by sending uh, Lada Kalina somewhere on the Mars orbit. <laughs> but since the only thing they can offer is like a nuclear war, and uh, let's not forget on this um, Valdai Forum discussion by Putin, his kind of quasi joke that um, all the Russians would all land up in heaven, in paradise, yeah, yeah, yeah. as the result of the nuclear war. That's why there sh uh, some kind of reaction was expected, and um, this harsh position of the United States and Russia, I would definitely, for the world security, it is an interesting question and position, by, but at least somebody is reacting rather strictly on what Russia does, showing that these actions cannot be tolerated. I mean, I think... But could this be treated as a message to the rest of the world, mm -hmm. to, to the rest of the, inter of the players in the international arena, that the United States of America do not support Russia's actions? Well, it is, obviously, because... Um, you know, it, there is always great responsibility in being the world's superpower. Mm -hmm. Especially, but I think um, many can criticize me for that there is some logic in Trump's action because usually the people say there, are, there is no logic okay, in his mm -hmm. action. This is a stereotype. I think, yes. Right it's now, just, this is a stereotype mm, already. At least he's kind of predictable because first, he, uh, when he was in Europe and the United States is still pushing European powers regarding the Nord Stream 2, all this um, gas transportation to Europe because they have their own economic interest and will understand them but he pushes NATO members in Europe to pay more uh, to the NATO mm -hmm. and uh, to strengthen the security and on the other hand the Americans take like very serious action on pressing Russia more which is then a logical consequence and that mm -hmm. is something that is uh, at least when we can predict the geopolitical constellation of powers in the world there is something positive in it. Mm -hmm. Okay, for what we know right now is that um, uh, the assistant to the President for National Security Affairs of the USA, John Bolt, is in Moscow right now for talks. And uh, apparently he's going to announce this decision to Moscow, of, to, to the Kremlin, to Russia's officials that the US is going mm -hmm. to withdraw itself out of the pact. Does it mean that there is no official... Uh, statement yet. And if there is no official statement yet, maybe, just maybe, is there a chance that this is just a warning from the US to Russia and maybe a, some kind of a deal is still possible so that the US stays in the pact? Uh, there is always a possibility for the renewal of the pact, or at least that this pact is being preserved. I'm not international legal expert to comment on the technicalities because I do understand that within the international law there are many technicalities, technicalities of how a country renounces membership in a particular agreement and things like that. But um, I think from the United States position it is a clear sign that we are open to negotiation at least mm -hmm. if it can contribute to the world security but we are not going to tolerate certain actions, certain position. Mm -hmm. Because as, I, as I, repeat, I would repeat myself then 
the Russia's what is Russia is offering to the world is threat by military means, mm -hmm. and then to counteract them, that was a normal reaction. But you're right in saying that there might be some another deal because Trump's attitude, at least to the figure of Putin, is in some respect even psycho from psychoanalytical position. It is a very interesting <laughs> attitude. But let's you know, let's see. It's difficult to speculate on it mm -hmm. right now. Yeah. Okay, let's talk about some other reactions and uh, right now I'm talking about the march that took part mm -hmm. in central London uh, where 700,000 people participated demanding another referendum on the Brexit deal meaning the, um, the United Kingdom leaving uh, mm. the European Union. Is this possible? Meaning second referendum or is, is Brexit a done deal? Well, um, I would hope that it would be possible. I mean, if to formulate my idea like that, um, I think what I understand clearly, clearly now, and this is from many talks with my foreign colleagues on the mainland Europe, is that the Brexit as a result of this referendum is an interesting situation in which a small group of politicians mm -hmm. using certain media were able to manipulate the public opinion, especially they made promises that were impossible in the first instance. Like, for example, you know, this money was sent to the European Union, we can invest them into NHS services and things like that. That was impossible from the very beginning. But it showed that even a small group of politicians can manipulate the public opinion and then withdraw themselves from any responsibilities. Mm -hmm. So they cannot be held accountable for what they promised at least. And this is a very serious situation. Well, from a political perspective, the political scientist, uh, the, the, and I also believe that the European Union has a future, and uh, it is a good organization, not only preserving peace and stability, but also in terms of economic trade. And this is what the United Kingdom is now experiencing. If mm -hmm. withdrawal is uh, something that that has to be done, uh, no means what, then there is a huge problems for the United Kingdom and for its economy as well. So this is a very strange situation. And when, when so you basically, the United Kingdom is going to end up in a worse situation rather than the European Union after the Brexit is over is implemented. Oh, true, true. Because we can we can also discuss if we were in Brussels, the position somebody decides to leave by a very small margin, with many politicians who really speculated and manipulated, as I say, the public opinion in this result, really saying things that were not realistic from the mm -hmm. very beginning. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think the, the proposition of the Brussels has in print basically two positions. Either punish, you know, harsh divorce mm -hmm. to send a message <laughs> to other countries, <laughs> or okay. maybe in the other position like, okay, we forgive you Great Britain, leave and uh, we'll all be happy. What's going to happen th in this case scenario? Exactly. So the good question is Northern Ireland is a huge question and point, how to agree that. I uh, listened to uh, Theresa, May, uh, Theresa May answering questions in the parliament where she really was, you know, my feeling was that she was also not very sure about what to say, but hesitant to say what can be the next possible or better deal. But we can s still see that now these negotiations are not l leading both parties into some normal way or to some mm -hmm. good results. Whether that, again, as a, I'm, I'm unfortunately not a legal expert, but I hope that if they had uh, another referendum on that issue, maybe the result would be otherwise, of course. Uh, because another, I can give you very, it's very interesting uh, statistics um, it's, were from the how many British nationals decided to gain another citizenship, either the Irish or even the German. Mm. Because if you had some Jewish ancestors who were from Germany expelled during the Second World War during uh, because of the Nazi laws, so the, especially in the first year after the referendum, the German embassy uh, in the United Kingdom, they were overwhelmed with so many British citizens who decided to reclaim the German citizenship by the mm. right of, mm. you know, expelled Jewish relatives. It was an interesting situation still, yes, because you would like to secure your own position as a citizen within wider Europe. Okay, taking into account that um, the United Kingdom usually remains absolutely resolute in any mm. kind of conflict that is going on in the world. Um, if Brexit does happen on um, the 29th of March next year, as it's been announced and planned uh, so far, is it going to influence somehow in any kind of uh, vision uh, the support or the way the uh, European Union supports Ukraine right now in its mm. hybrid war with Russia? Again, I would refer to, to Prime Minister May when she answered questions in Parliament mm. and, and she said that they, they, the British position towards Russia, especially after the Skripal case, mm -hmm. where she even made this joke in the Parliament saying that they even blame me that I personally invented Novachok. 
So this is also a funny situation. So uh, and I think that when they invited those two guys who enjoy the Salisbury Cathedral very much to <laughs> to give a, a public interview, which is also <laughs> funny. So the Brits they felt like even being th this would be something you know really obscene in this situation because um, British intelligence is rather good in many respects. So this mm -hmm. was uh, and. Um, Answering your question briefly, if Russia continues behaving like that, there is no way uh, the United Kingdom is going to change its rather harsh position because for the United Kingdom, and they always stress that they are also permanent members of the Security Council, the United mm -hmm. Nations Organization, they would still remain on this very harsh and strong position. May also mention that um, the violation of European countries' airspace, which Russia does as provocation constantly, is something they're not going to tolerate. Mm -hmm. Staying on the topic of Ukraine, um, mm -hmm. in Warsaw, uh, on October 24th through 25th, there is going to be a security forum. Mm -hmm. And um, Ukraine, of course, is going to be present there in the face of our Prime Minister, Pavel Klimkin, where a meeting with his counterpart from Hungary is going to occur. Now, we are Ukraine, meaning we, by, by we I mean Ukraine, are not on very good terms with Hungary. Now, is that um, issue going to be resolved anytime soon? Uh, depending uh, if we're talking about the law on education, which is very and sensitive issue. Well. Um, we had recently a visit by His Excellency, the, the ambassador of Latvia to Ukraine, uh, Yuri Spoikans. He visited Kyiv Hill Academy, invited by the School of Policy Analysis mm -hmm. and my colleagues from the Students Association for Political Science. Well, what he said that uh, first the Hungarians many times refer to another issue, uh, this um, multiple citizenship, if it's possible, and the Hungarians suggest the Latvian example where the, uh, the ambassador explained that Latvian case was different because they wanted to uh, preserve connection to those Latvian who traveled to Ireland, United Kingdom to work and settle there so that they would have the possibility to have um, at least two citizenships of Latvian and the new newly acquired. So this is not the comparison. He said that Latvia suggests that maybe this formula of 60% of instruction in Ukrainian, the state mm -hmm. official language, and then potentially 40 in the local language. But it's definitely that for all European countries, it is clear that if those ethnic Hungarians are Ukrainian citizens, they have to, they must have some comment of Ukrainian on a decent level to be involved into Ukrainian of course. We, sh we shall not also forget that for Hungary, uh, this is a rare case where I think if it's like uh, uh, Article 7 of the Hung Hungarian Constitution regarding those Hungarians who are living abroad. Because, you know, for Hungary, this Trianon Treaty was a huge historical trauma and also psychologically. So uh, I think, and another thing, uh, you know, it is always the case if there are many problems within the internal politics and internal policies, mm -hmm. uh, they tend to be substituted by external quarrels and pressing Ukraine and saying, ah, we're not going to give Ukraine uh, further steps towards NATO or European Union. Uh, this is also, you cannot play that card too long. Um, this is my educated guess. So I hope some agreement, we, we, we shall, we have to be open to suggestions. And the rest of the Ukrainian problem is that we really don't have clear position about on legislation. What we do if we catch somebody with two passports Mm -hmm. the, there are no real. Uh, co there should be a court system, legal punishments, or any other. We have to develop the system how to work on those cases. Otherwise, we can, you know, as a former Ukrainian oligarch said, two uh, two citizenships are impossible. But what about three or four? <laughs> it's not written in the law. So that would also be a case. We have to do our own work. We have to be open for some negotiations, especially with these uh, minorities, Hungarian, Romanians. We have to do something with the dual citizenship. But answering your question, I hope there would be some progress because Mr. Klimkin met Siarto and they had some discussions. Mm -hmm. So I, because I don't think that in long term, it is in Hungarian interest to have a strong Ukraine member of NATO and potentially of the European Union, because that would also mean security for Hungary as well. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for coming and explaining the whole situation on the international arena right now. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you. That was Maxim Yakovlev. He's the director of the School for Policy Analysis and National University of Kyiv Mahila Academy. Thank you so much for watching UATV. Stay tuned for more.